It's amazing how fast nine and a half tons of rock with the gravel goes on a project, even this small. It blows my mind every time. I looked at the order this morning and I told Jack, I go, I think we should send some of it back because I didn't necessarily think, I really didn't think we were going to use it all, but we did. And we use a lot of it in our retaining wall work. I think it's an area where a lot of us underestimate the amount of stone. So stick to your calculations. Remember, for a two foot tall waterfall, going five lineal feet will equal a ton of rock for us, for granite boulders. So just just know that when you're estimating some of this stuff. But Brian was clearly right on with his stone calculations for a project of this side. We didn't overbuild it, we didn't underbuild it. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna turn the camera on as soon as Jack's done rinsing everything off and getting everything nice and pretty for you. And you guys can get to see the beautiful waterfalls that we created today. All right, so here's our canvas for the day. Brand new construction, which is always fun. We don't have to worry about tearing anything apart. We are going to be building a six small block Palmas waterfall reservoir right here with a kind of a little three drop Babbly Brook waterfall. The waterfalls will start about six feet away from the fence, about eight feet away from the patio and just kind of twist and turn down into here. We are going to cut out all of this grass in through here, all the way back down and through here. And that will be all dirt. We've got a couple extra yards of dirt coming in order to help us build that berm out for our waterfall. So really before we get the grass out of here, the first thing I want to do is get this brand new patio covered up. There's some wet boot prints, but fortunately we haven't done any kind of destruction yet and created any kind of dirt or mud. I just want to protect this beautiful new patio. It'll really help for cleanup. So we're going to do that, unload the truck, then get all of our sod cut out of here. This is our access down through here and you can see the guys are already starting to unload and bring stuff back. That's going to be the order of business. Once we get all the grass out, then reservoir as usual, then fabric liner, fabric, aqua block and then we'll go ahead and start moving rock back and building our stream and waterfalls. So it should be a pretty quick project as long as we don't run into any unforeseen. I think this will be an easy one day project. So knock on wood. You ready, Jack? Yep. All right. Okay, so we've got 99.8% of the sod out of here. You can see Jax already has the aqua block panels out to go ahead and trace out, or I guess spray paint perimeter or the footprint of that reservoir. It's a six small block system. We're gonna bring that water as close to the patio as we can, which is why he put the aqua blocks as close to the patio as he did. So we're gonna go ahead and start digging our hole and let's go, let's go. Okay, nice hair today. All right, so we've got our aqua blocks built, our hole is dug. You can see the fabric and liner is in, which marks a very good point in the project. So you see Corey kind of stepping down a lot of those folds, getting that fabric to sit in there nice and flat and flush along the bottom. Then what they'll do is they will put the pump vault in and then go ahead and stack their aqua blocks accordingly. I believe it goes one, two, three, and then it's just gonna be two rows of three going back that way. Once we get that done, we're gonna go ahead and backfill using some of that dirt. Um, you can see the big mound behind us. It will definitely not be that tall. We're gonna feather that dirt way back, but we have plenty of rock for retaining walls, wing walls, and all that good stuff. So it will not be a three foot tall waterfall. It's gonna be more of like a 16 to 18 inch tall waterfall coming in on top of the aqua blocks. We dug the aqua blocks down about six inches below the top of the patio. That way we give ourselves a little bit more water storage and it also allows us to bring that water right up to the patio, which is always a really, really neat effect for us. All the dirt's back here. We're just gonna be waiting on rock after we get that filled. We do have an auto fill line that we're going to install so we can kind of walk you through that and then get that going as well. really good point in the projects. We've got a reservoir in, got all of our dirt back there. We just finished cleaning off the driveway. We made a big mess. What I didn't want to happen is when Moose came in to deliver all the rocks with the Moffat, he's going to track that stuff back and forth, really grinding it into the driveway. So we got that clean. As you can see behind me, he's got one of the super sacks of gravel already here. We've got another one, and I think we have about six hoppers worth of stone. All that stone is going to be staged right here on these plastic mats. The reason we put that down is we really wanted to protect this grass. We know we're going to have a hell of a big pile out here. So we went ahead and covered the grass where we know the stones are going to go. As these stones are coming off the truck, myself and a couple other guys are going to start schlepping those boulders back, making more room for moose to keep piling rock up here. So we just want to stay efficient and try and keep ahead of the game. So. So 
we've got about half the stone back here now. We have three tons of the 18 to 24s, which we have right there. You can see Corey muscling that rock over. That's gonna be one of our frame rocks for this bottom waterfall area. We do this a couple different ways. We either build that bottom waterfall on top of the aqua blocks, or we'll actually carve back behind the reservoir itself, do kind of a half moon or a semi-circle shape, carve it back in, and then we will nestle those frame rocks on either side of that little cove that we do. Because I wanna bring that bottom waterfall in nice and close to the patio, I think we don't need to, or we can forego carving that back. So the bottom frame rocks are actually gonna go on top of the reservoir itself. And then we'll do a little bib liner down on top just to get an extension of that stream. I want that water to disappear as close to this patio as possible. Also, when these guys are setting these boulders, that should probably be the right hand side. Yeah, but it's um, right now it's where your left hand is should probably be the bottom. Um, when setting these frame rocks, you really want to take into account, A, not to break the aqua block panels, but also the height of those rocks, which will dictate the berm coming off of the side, because that's really gonna dictate your water level. Hope that makes sense, but I'm gonna go ahead and get in a little bit closer into Jack. Do you want me to help you? So we got the real muscle on the project today. These two guys have moved just about every big boulder on the project. Pretty impressive, given the size of Jack. It's like twice as big, three times as big as Jack. Which is good, I mean, he's like an ant. Yeah. So we have the waterfalls basically built. We're just kind of working in some wing wall stones and kind of finishing things off. You have, you have Dan over there on the lights. And Luis is gonna start foaming some of our waterfall areas. And uh, before we trim this liner, we wanted to get a retaining stone inside of the liner because of the height of our waterfalls and the way some of this stuff's working. So a very common mistake that we see people make is they want to put a retaining stone outside of the liner and what they'll do is they will pinch that liner up as high as they can get it based on the waterfall height and the level of water in the pooling area back up in here. What I want to do is actually put a rock inside of the liner and then just foam everything really well. In the event that it ever the foam should ever fail or it should ever potentially leak all that water will stay inside the liner taking the path of least resistance go behind the wing wall rock we will leave an open area as you've seen in some of our other videos and it will stay all inside the liner. Liner. We're not relying on the liner being propped up between two rocks and the potential that that'll work or not work. So we're gonna go ahead and just move this enormous boulder as a wing wall inside the liner. We'll still make it look good. We'll throw some big gravel on the outside of it and in between the rocks to help dress it up and it will transition very well and nicely into the landscape. So we're gonna lay that thing down. Corey's gonna watch his fingers. Good, so we just have to twist it. So little by little, Corey's gonna continue to move that rock over and really try and button that stuff up. I like what he's doing with that rock. He's changing elevations and heights inside with some of these boulders. You can see how not really any of these rocks are all at the same height as each other. That looks perfect, perfect. Yep, we just have to prop the back up just a little bit just because right now it's leaning backwards, but that looks great. Can you spin my left-hand corner back at all? Yeah, just a hair. So you got Jack rinsing off the rock and patio. You've got Luis over here blowing everything off. That is a wrap. It looks absolutely incredible. It's amazing how fast nine and a half tons of rock with the gravel goes on a project, even this small. It blows my mind every time. I looked at the order this morning and I told Jack, I go, I think we should send some of it back because I didn't necessarily think, I really didn't think we were gonna use it all, but we did. And we use a lot of it in our retaining wall work. I think it's an area where a lot of us underestimate the amount of stone. So stick to your calculations. Remember for a two foot tall waterfall, going five lineal feet will equal a ton of rock for us for granite boulders so just know that when you're estimating some of this stuff but brian was clearly right on with his stone calculations for a project to the side we didn't overbuild it we didn't underbuild it i think it looks absolutely fantastic i'm going to turn the camera on as soon as jack's done rinsing everything off and getting everything nice and pretty for you and you guys can get to see the beautiful waterfalls that we created today all right, so Jack is rinsing everything off. There is a fair amount of organics from all the dirt and dust and debris that were on this rock. So the chlorinated water is reacting with it, creating an enormous amount of foam back in here. So you actually see this foam continue to expand as we go. But check out this beautiful trio of waterfalls. Just a gorgeous little cascade. I love the upper pooling area. That spillway is sunk down in that pooling area. You don't even know it's there. I just love how all the rock work, it's just so incredibly seamless with the landscape and how well 
all the edges are done and where the dirt comes up to the back sides of some of these rocks. Just looks absolutely beautiful. I love this area down in here where we've got the big gravel. Bring that water up super close to the patio. I love this big stone in the foreground right there just to break everything up. Looks absolutely fantastic. I can't think of another word. The only thing that would make it better is, would be if that foam would go away so you guys could get a really good idea of that bib liner where that water is going. But it's not and we're not going to wait around for it. So we got nine and a half tons of rock and gravel over here, all granite. Let me show you the back side. Over here, here's where a lot of that stone went. You can see some of these 24, 36 inch boulders are tucked into the back area over here. Just has to be functional, folks. We left some really nice spots for different terrestrial plants. You know, maybe a, um, an understory tree somewhere back over there. Maybe a Japanese maple off the side and just some of those low growing shrubs. But it looks absolutely awesome with plenty of room to plant to boot. And then you've got a gazing ball up off to the right. Nice placement there, Jack. I didn't do it. Oh, looks like your house, nice and tchotchke. Isn't that what they say in your language, tchotchke? Anyways, as you can see, they're all slacking behind me. It is time to go. That is a wrap. If you enjoyed this, let us know. Give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions on the construction process, feel free to let us know that as well. Until next time, we'll see you later.